Welcome everybody to the Wednesday team call. Sorry, I've been on two different uh, conference calls, one with the CAB, the Coach Advisory Board. So make sure to check the team page. I shared an awesome CEO update from Carl Deichler inside the Scotty's PS Coach page in the Team Dynasty. You're gonna wanna read, take some time to read through that. There's some good things happening. Um, also want to remind you guys about Super Saturday coming up in April. Make sure that you have marked your calendar and there you're going to be at your local Super Saturday event. If you have coaches, customers, challengers, anybody lives in the Manchester, New York area, that's where I'm going to be uh, speaking there at that, that um, market council has asked me to come out there. So I'll be out there. So that's going to be super exciting. And then remember that mid-July we have Coach Summit. Um, I'm going to give you guys my testimonial of Coach Summit. My first year, I remember I started April 11, 2011, and I couldn't make it to the June Super Saturday because I didn't have any more days off of work. So um, instead of being bummed about that or complaining about that, I made a commitment that I would go next year and take a team with me, and I committed to doing that, and we brought 50 people with us, so 53 coaches to that coach summit the next year. So um, the, next, the following year after that, we had 150 coaches at summit. The following year after that, about 300. The year after that, about 800. And then last year, we had about 1,400 coaches at summit. So there's a key to success is if, um, if you want to grow your business, it's important that you get to events like this team call, you get your coaches to events, that you get to Super Saturdays, that you also uh, most importantly get to Summit because we want to see you there. We want to be a part of that adventure and journey with you guys. So we only have about 30 minutes, so I'm going to get right to introducing our um, guest speaker today, Morgan Rieger. She is a three-time elite Canadian coach. She's a nine-star diamond success club. 10 All-Star. She spoke at Summit last year. Her team is called Team Limitless. She also owns two franchises, from what I understand, a double franchise owner, and in the former life was a science teacher. So one thing I love about having teachers on the call is they, they know how to teach us some pretty good things. So we're going to let her take over. And Morgan, it's all yours. We're excited to hear from you on this 30-minute mentor series team call that we're doing. Awesome. Thank you so much, Scotty. And hey, everybody. Hope you're having a good day. It's been a crazy morning already. I work at, I've got my nice, sexy uniform on right now, but I jumped home for a little bit to have better Wi-Fi on here for you guys. But I'm super pumped. Um, it's funny because when Scotty asked me to do this call, I like thought back to when I first met him. And I don't know if he even remembers. I'm like, I got to find the photo. So it was actually on the first Success Club cruise back in March of 2014. And I was a new coach and I had watched like a lot of Scotty's YouTube trainings, like I'm sure a lot of you have. And I thought he was like this celebrity, right? So we were on the beach and I worked up enough courage to ask him to get a photo and I had to find our photo. I don't know, <laughs> you probably don't remember it, but it was like the highlight of my trip, right? Cause I'm like, you learn so much from these other people, right? Without them even knowing. So anyways, it's pretty cool to see how time has come from there. So I am going to dive in. Like I said, I want to make this a 30 minutes. That's well worth your guys's time. Um, but I'll kind of share a bit about my story and guide you through and what I feel has been the most important part of my business. And if you can just take a piece away from this, um, you know, whatever piece you can take away. I hope it helps you. So I got started coaching back in July of 2013. I had been a Beachbody lover for probably eight years before that. I was first introduced to Beachbody when my sister, my older sister, bought Turbo Jam. I don't know if any of you remember Turbo Jam, right? Shalene Johnson in like the plaid skirt. Um, she bought it when I was in about grade six. And if you guys have siblings, you can't use their stuff, right? So when she did it, I'm like, dang, that looks fun. So when she was out of the house, I'd actually steal the workout and do it myself. And that was kind of my first introduction, not only to Beachbody, but just to fitness. And I kind of fell in love with fitness from there because it was fun. And over the next eight years, kept doing Beachbody programs, went to the gym, like fitness just became part of my life. And, um, uh, what year? So then um, what year? So in 2013, I had actually graduated university that summer and was going to take my first teaching job. And I was kind of went into like the gym rap mode right then. I was into weightlifting and stuff, but I'm like, hey, I'm a new teacher. New teachers don't have time to go to the gym. So I'm going to go on Beachbody and I am going to order myself a new program to do at home. 
and I liked weightlifting at the time. So I'm like, yes, body beast is out. So I'm like, that's a great program. So I went online to teambeachbody.com and I don't know that God's must've been watching over me that I didn't go to beachbody.com. I ended up on team beach body and I'm like, okay, ordering body beast. Yep. Ordered it. And then literally I was like, Oh, what's this coaching tab? I'm like, I, I never knew beach body had a thing called coaching. And this is legit how I signed up to be a coach. I clicked on the tab, read the little paragraph and was like, cool. I should become a coach. I like Beachbody. So I told Steven, my fiance about it. And he's like, yeah, you should sign up. And I'm like, no, no, like it's probably just who knows because I'm a terrible decision maker and I don't like doing things out of the box. So I'm like, no, not for me, but I couldn't stop talking about it. So he's like, Morgan, if you don't sign up, I'm going to just sign you up. So you stop talking about it. So I signed up that day and then a week later I bought Shakeology. So literally just paid the maximum amount for everything when you can sign up to be a coach. And that's how I started. Knew nothing about coaching, nada at all. All I knew was I like beach body workouts and I liked fitness and that's what got me to sign up. And then from there I finally figured out, Oh, like this is what coaching is. I really like it. And I dove in um, after that. And when I look at, you know, my journey, I've been a coach now for three and a half years and over the, you know, people have asked me, well, how did you, you know, what do you feel like allowed you to be a successful coach? Um, after my first year of coaching, I set a goal for myself to match my teaching income so I could step away from teaching. Um, because Steven was opening up a franchise. We own a Quiznos and a Yogurties as well. So he was starting that. So I'm like, wouldn't it be wonderful to step away from teaching and be able to help him and work Beachbody at the same time. So I set this goal. Okay. Morgs, you got to make a thousand dollars a week, um, to match that, to step away from teaching. And obviously that wasn't my goal when I first signed up because I didn't know that was possible. Um, but, I set that goal and I achieved that at year one and now I'm three and a half years in, but you know, people ask me, well, what, you know, what sets you apart? Why did, why could you be successful? And I always had trouble answering that question because I'm like nothing. I literally live in a tiny town in Saskatchewan, Canada with 5,000 people in the middle of the prairies. It's the boringest place to live. Like I don't tell my team to come visit me ever. I'm like, I'll come to you. Um, it's like I had nothing special to offer, but when I finally like thought about it more and more and more, I'm like, what's special is of, about me, what my superpower is, is the ability to show up. And I think that's super relatable to new coaches, to any coach that thinks maybe they can't do this because I had 90 friends on Facebook because as a new teacher, they tell you to like delete all your friends because social media is like the devil as a new teacher, they told me. So of course I'm like, delete everybody. Um, I didn't like social media. I thought it was for people who just wanted to brag about partying and all that stuff. So I wasn't involved in that. Um, so I just thought, you know, like, what is my superpower? And I, like I said, it was showing up. I didn't have fancy blogs, fancy videos, fancy photos, nothing. I had one hour a day um, to work my business as a new teacher. And I did that in the morning time. But the reason I am where I am today is because I showed up every single day, 365 days a year for three and a half years. Um, and I think not many coaches can say that wholeheartedly. And I actually can, I can say I've never missed a national wake up call for three and a half years. I can say that with complete honesty. I can say I haven't missed my power hour, which I built off Scotty's um, 10 things I do each day call. I haven't missed that every single day, any single day for three and a half years. And I even look you know, when we, Steve and I were training for Quiznos, we were away for seven weeks um, from home. And I remember vividly this one time we were at this sketch hotel they put us in, right? Because they don't want to fork out the big bucks. You're just there to train. So we were in this sketchy hotel and we trained from 8 a.m. to like 7 p.m. at this store. So I'm like, okay, when am I going to work my business? So I get up at 5 a.m. every single day and I go down to the lobby of the hotel and all they had was like this old school computer desk. So I took my laptop. I put it on top of the keyboard they have. I put my headphones in. Um, and I played inspirational YouTube videos so I could drown out all the weird stuff going on. Um, 
And I would sit there, I probably looked weird as could be, and I, was, I would just type as fast as my fingers could go for one hour um, before we go training. And so I'd do that, I'd go upstairs, Stephen was still in bed, I was doing Pio at the time, because I'm like, no equipment, and I would work out for the next 30 minutes. You know when you walk into a hotel room and it's got like a little, little tiny walkway and then the bathroom and the beds are right there? I did Pio in that little tiny hallway. My laptop sat on the toilet and I'd lunge in half into the washroom, half out. I'd be hitting the wall and Steven would be like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm good. Cause I, I did it in the dark with like barely any sound cause he was still sleeping. Like nothing was perfect at all. And most people would have said, I can't work my business for these seven weeks, right? But I showed up an hour of my business, a half hour working out. And actually that time in my business, my business blew up because I was only focused on those very few things that grew, grow your business, right? Nothing fancy. So I kind of wanted to just walk you guys through kind of the four stages I see in this business of myself showing up because it looked a little bit different and hopefully you can relate depending on which stage you're at. So the first phase for me um, in this business was showing up for my own health and fitness. When I started coaching, I unfortunately, you know, when I was going to start Body Beast, I had fallen a little bit out of my own health and fitness journey. Um, I, like I said, I was graduating university. Stephen and I traveled to Thailand for five weeks, Thailand and Bali. He ended up shattering his wrist, flying home early to get surgery. And I was kind of figuring out, oh my gosh, is this what I want to do with my life with teaching? And it just like hit the fan, right? So the first way I showed up was for my own health and fitness. I'm like, I got to, I completed body beast, the whole 90 day program, day one to day 90, didn't miss a single day. I actually did 30 days of Shakeology before I started body beast. So I did like 30 days of Shakeology, which was a cool transformation to see. Then on my 30th day of Shakeology, I did the 90 days of body beast. And I was living with my parents at the time. So I'd work out um, in the basement while they were still sleeping. And so showing up my own health and fitness, that was number one. So my next phase of showing up consistently was for my own business. When I finally learned what this business could do, I'm like, okay, I set that goal to, you know, match my teaching income to be with Steven. So I'm like, I need to show up every day, do this power hour every single day for my own business. And that might sound selfish, but that's what it was at the start. I didn't have really any challengers. I didn't have really any coaches. So I was showing up for me and my goals. I had my fitness under control. So now it was like next level showing up for my business and my why basically, right? I was starting from scratch just like everybody else. So trainings, the new coach training, you know, my, my power hour checklist, I only had that hour a day, but I made sure it was scheduled in every single day. And it started off, I would do it, um, I would work out in the morning and then I'd go teach for the day and then I'd do my beach body work afterwards, but I was living with my parents. So when I got home, it was very distracting. They want to talk and visit. I'm like, no, this isn't working. So I shifted it and I got up at five in the morning um, and did my business in the morning. I'd go teach all day and then I put my workout afterwards. Cause at least like when you're working out, I can kind of like multitask or I just turn the music on loud. So I'm like, mom, dad, I'm busy. Um, so I swapped that and it worked out much better. I was like super effective in the morning time. Nobody was up. I could pound it out way quicker. Um, so that was kind of my second phase of showing up. And then the third one was once I started to get my own challengers and my own coaches, I had to start to show up in a different way. So I had my fitness under control. I had the basics of the business under control, but now I had these other people involved in this whole thing going on, right? I had challengers and I had coaches that were putting their trust in me. And I think I almost get like fired up talking about this because I think one of the most disrespectful things a coach can ever do is disappear from the people they brought into this business. I just like, I've got goosebumps because I see it happen so much. And I'm like, you work so freaking hard to help those people. And then you're just going to go MIA on them. Like, what kind of human being are you? You don't just get to pack up and leave your kids, or I don't get to just pack up and leave my franchise. 
you know what I mean? So the third step was super powerful. Like I had, I was getting up at 5 a.m. because people put their life in my hands. They deserved me to be there. Um, so that was kind of like, that was a real big switch in my business. It was no longer me. It was other people. And that fueled me to show up even more. That scares off some people, I think, because they feel a lot of pressure. But let's just be honest. Again, it's nothing fancy. I didn't have to have these fancy challenge groups for these people or these fancy trainings for my coaches. They didn't want that. They can find all that on Google. It's no big deal. But they needed to see me being there for them every single day because that's probably why most people have failed on their weight loss journey before, right? Somebody gave up on them. Somebody got them excited to start and then a week or two later, they were just like, okay, the, the excitement's worn off, right? But if I start something, I'm going to finish it, right? Um, so that's kind of was my third phase of showing up. And then my fourth one um, which is kind of in the phase, I mean, I'm in all the phases right now, but then this fourth one was for future challengers and coaches. Um, so what I mean by that is, you know, you, you, you've had these multiple challengers go through your business, multiple coaches go through your business, but it's those successful coaches that are take it to the fourth level that are like, okay, who's out there that still needs my help? Who's out there that's still silently watching me that hasn't pulled the trigger yet? Because if you look at your own situation, it's like, okay, how long did you have to watch your coach before you joined their challenge group? How long did you have to watch your coach before you signed up to be a coach? Maybe you were one of those people that jumped the gun and was like, yeah, one month, I'm signing up, right? Or one week. Those people do exist, but not many of them. Um, or like me, where it's like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just signing up. Um, but I had to think about those people that, have been, that are going to take a year or two to pull the trigger. And I need to show up every day on my social media for them. And so many people, I think, get caught up in the likes or the comments on their posts. And you guys can look at my social media. I don't get a ton of likes or comments. It's just, I don't know, it's just the way my social media works. But for some reason, I can hit Success Club 20 every single month and recruit at least five coaches every single month without doing a ton of personally inviting. And not everybody can do that, but I can do it because I sh have shown up for three and a half years for three to four posts on social media every single day. People trust me. They trust that when I get up at 5 a.m., they're going to see a motivational quote from me. They can trust me that I'm not going to fall off my fitness journey. I might go up and down for sure, and I'm going to be honest about that. But I think that's, that's the thing. People join people who they can trust. And some people can build that trust faster than others. But because I consistently was, am able to show up on my social media, I can build that trust with people. I can constantly have an influx of people. Um, so that's how I show up right now. So first, obviously, it was for my own health and fitness. Second, it was for my own personal business. Third, it was for my challengers and coaches. And fourth, it was for my future challengers and coaches. Um, so I know when I, every time I talk about this, I've seen people's, yeah, four months to sign up. Yeah, eight months. It's crazy, right? So when I, when I talk about this, I realize not everybody's like me. Like, they're not like super anal and like me with consistency and that's okay. Everybody has their strengths and this is mine. But when I, when I talk about this, I always want to, I've got this quote that I want to share with you because I never want this to discourage people. Some people think, well, I'm not consistent. I've been up and down. Maybe I should just throw in the towel. And that's the easiest way out. And that's the route. Sure. Some people take, but I think that comes down a lot to this ego. And I'll just share the quote and then I'll kind of explain. So this is a quote that really stood out to me. The reality is that everybody makes mistakes. The issue isn't whether you will make them. It's what you will do about them. It's whether you will choose the path of humility and courage or the path of ego and pride. And I think this plays a big role in what we do in, as coaches and this power of showing up because we're all going to make mistakes. 
we're all going to fall off our fitness journey, or maybe a tragedy happens in your life and you legit fall off coaching for a month. And that happens, but there's two roads to take. There is that road to take ego and pride, right? Well, you know, people, people have seen me fall off. Who am I to be their coach? Like I, I can't dive back in and admit I made a mistake. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to step back. Right. That that's hands down ego to me. You're worrying about what other people think of you. But if you can take that path of humility and pride, it's like your business can transform. You go onto your social media, you go in, into your team page, you're like, hey team, you know, this is what happened to me. I'm sorry, but this is what I'm committing to do for you. Or getting on your Facebook page, right? I do it all the time when I travel because when I travel, like I definitely work out, but I like to eat, I like to have a few bevies, you know, I like to have a good time, but I'll come back and I'll get on my social media and I'll be like, hey guys, like I've been traveling, you know, I kind of fell off my fitness, like I had some, or sorry, I usually work out, but I kind of fell off. I had some little too much wine or a little too much of this, but Hey, like we're starting day one quarter force right now. Like I'll give, I'll update you guys on how I'm feeling through this week. And I'm just like super honest with them because that humility and that courage relates to people because let's just be honest. That's real life. That's what everybody else is going through. Everybody's failing. All the time. Everybody's falling off. And if I can step forward and be courageous and just be humble, people are like, oh yeah, I get that. I had too much wine the other night too. But you know, if Morks can do it, maybe I can too. Um, so that quote is kind of what I like to, to leave you with. Like if, if you're like, yeah, I'm like you, I'm showing up every day. Kudos to you. That's awesome. If you maybe like, maybe I'm not showing up as much as I can. I hopefully that quote um, will help you just step forward, be courageous, be humble and be honest. And that's what people want to see. So that's what I have. I know I ended eight minutes early. I'm on this, but if we can wrap up or if there's any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. That was awesome. Anybody have any questions before I wrap up? That was super awesome, Morgan. Good. Thanks. Okay. I'm going to just say something. So something really stuck out to me. Um, that I love. And by the way, I remember that uh, jog <laughs> on the beach. I was running, do it, getting my run in in the morning. One thing that really stuck out to me before you gave your four uh, phases of um, showing up was first of all, you were absolutely in love with the programs for years. You love the product and the programs being uh, that's so important in business. And second thing, um, you set a goal to match your income and with a specific income amount. That's very important. So that stood out to me. And then number third is you found out what was special about you, like your gifts and your talents. I think so many times people identify their weaknesses, what they're not good at, and try to grow their weaknesses. And if you grow your weaknesses, you're just going to be a little bit better at your weaknesses and never fully develop your talents. So um, yours is consistency of the power of showing up. But I think all of us can, can apply these four things in these four lessons to anything, to this business, to being a parent, to a current job, um, showing up for yourself, showing up for your own business, showing up for your challengers and your customers. And that is scary at times to realize you have other people that are counting on you. Um, so you get to make the choice in that point to have that an empowering choice or a choice that is uh, scary. So choose to make it empowering that you have people counting on you that, that you have to that you can encourage them through your journeys. And I think you hit on that powerfully at the end of sharing your vulnerabilities um, and having that courage and that humility because that's what's relatable. And then always thinking about, I love what you said, because I think about how did I get recruited into this business? Uh, a lot of people don't know. You probably don't know this. Many of my team probably don't know this, but I had about 30 coaches send me copy and pasted scripts trying to invite me to be a coach. But Lindsay was the one that was always there. And the one always asking me questions about my family, about who I was. So she was always doing that last step of who are my future challenges and coaches. She did, wasn't concerned that I said no when she invited me the first time. You know, she, she was working on the other three phases, but also realizing that working with me, building a relationship with, with me, was um, who's that person out there that's watching? And that was me in that instance. So... Morgan, these are some powerful steps. I'm super excited that you shared some time with us. We know your time's valuable. You left the, uh, which was it, Quiznos? Mm -hmm. You left the Quiznos come share with us, and we feel blessed 
to have you with us. And you uh, made me break up, made me, uh, I guess, almost tear up at the end. So you're powerful at telling uh, your story and sharing with people. Uh, I can tell you guys I went, went through and going through some, one of the most hardest trials of my life right now. And when I first shared about it back in September, like I could have hid and disappeared. But by sharing that, I realized that people um, related with me more in that point. And that's how I made it through the last five months. And now I'm back to my, 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 my zone. Those five months I could have hid. But I came out and shared what I was going through. People related with that. And I had to apologize to some people that I was like, sorry, I wasn't fully present. Um, but I'm here now and I'm back. Um, but I didn't fully disappear and go MIA like Morgan said some people do. So make the decision to, to not ever go MIA because Morgan, I wrote in the chat, I don't know if you saw it, but one thing that was powerful that I, I know you're three-time elite and successful in everything you do because you do show up like that. And if you think a lot of times we've got to look outside Beachbody, this business, this is a business. Like if you don't, sh if, if, um, Morgs didn't open the door to Quiznos for a month, people would stop coming to the Quiznos and write reviews. That Quiznos sucks. Don't go to that Quiznos. Um, but she shows up just like she does in her business. So think about that on a bigger, um, realm and spectrum and, uh, you're going to do some amazing things. So. Morgan, you added incredible value to us. Again, thank you. And this call is recorded for anybody that needs to share it with your teammates. And Morgan, thanks again. And we'll see you guys all later. Thanks for having me, guys. See you later. Bye.